What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. We're going to talk about a few different things in this video. Primarily this video is going to be dedicated to a theory surrounding Scream 7 and it's going to entertain the idea of how the film doesn't need Sidney Prescott and it also quite literally does not need Sam Carpenter. You don't need the core four, you don't need Gale Weathers, you don't need any of these characters to honestly be back. We're going to primarily talk about how this could work if they wanted to do this and if they want to completely reboot it. it just entertaining that idea. And then we're going to talk about a lot of other horror updates related to Maxine, Jurassic World, uh, Jurassic Park 7, whatever you want to call that. We're going to talk about the Predator franchise, and then we're going to talk about Friday the 13th. So just to start off here with this Scream 7 theory. So it's a true crime theory of mine. It's going to be mostly inspired by the we don't need Sam and we don't need Sydney crowd. And you're absolutely correct. We don't need either of those characters. Like I mentioned, you don't need Gale. We don't need any returning characters. We simply want them to have completed plans that clearly existed before Spyglass torpedoed the entire creative aspect of the upcoming film. Now, despite that, yes, like I mentioned, we don't need these characters. So let's pretend Scream 7 is 99% not connected to 1 through 6 besides simply being in the same world. I say 99% because I have an ending in mind that builds to a potential Scream 8. Our opening target is someone with a deep disdain for true crime. They hate Stab, Ghostface, Ted Bundy, you name it. They hate all of those things related to true crime. Anything related to exploiting real world tragedies, they hate it and cannot stand it. Let's say this person is a teenage boy in his senior year of high school. He has an entire podcast dedicated to why true crime is bad for our culture and how it impacts the youth of America. He's from Woodsboro, so the disdain for Ghostface and Gail Weathers is a little personal to him. And there's an active killer that's knocked off three to four teens in the last month. Now, one night after finishing recording a new episode for his podcast, he hears some noises downstairs. Naturally, he goes to check them out. We, the viewer, get to see a ghost face killer is in his house, stalking him from the shadows. We get some stalking sequences, but he doesn't know what we do yet. And it can be very reminiscent of Wes's scene in Screen 5. This leads to an all out brawl. Uh, once Ghostface makes their presence known, but Ghostface in this opening is killed by the boy. And we jump to sometime later, still in their senior year. It's right around graduation time. The podcast teen has given up his passion and is just seen as a traumatized student who still hates true crime. Then we meet a group of teens who are also seniors at the same high school as our opening survivor. Our main protagonist can be a Sydney or Sam type. Her parents just got divorced, so she's upset about that. But she has a loving boyfriend and a group of friends who all love true crime and horror just as much as she does. So they're the complete opposite of our opening victim. Naturally, because of their interest in horror and true crime, the new killer that arises starts targeting them. But wait, if the opening team killed his attacker, then where does this new ghost face come from? Some of you might expect me to say that the killer had an accomplice that was never revealed, but that's far too easy and expected. Ultimately, what I would do is the new Ghostface killer would be revealed to be the teen boy with the podcast who survived his opening attack. He's gone off the deep end. So you have a victim turned killer for the first time ever. What's their issue, though? See, the Ghostface attack at the beginning of the film would be connected to an online group of people that make bets on people's lives. And the podcast kid just happened to be the unfortunate pick of the week at the time. The group would pick a student at their school and bet on if they'd make it out alive. That's why three or four other people were already dead before the opening attack. Where does the protagonist and her friend group come in, though? Well, her boyfriend was a member of this betting group and the podcast team found this out and assumed she and the rest of her friends knew about it. But they didn't know. The kid's motive is all tied to true crime and how these people represent everything he believes in terms of how it corrupts the youth of America since he almost lost his life thanks to a sick game involving betting on people's lives. Ultimate goal for him is framing the boyfriend and exposing the online betting community that he was a part of, which all of this would be a success. And they do what Jill Roberts was so close at doing. This person actually gets away with it. And then at the end, during their graduation, we can hear a voiceover in their head post high school graduation that lets us know they plan to strike again 
and are considering paying a visit to some familiar Woodsboro faces. Now, the reason I say they are considering paying a visit to some familiar Woodsboro faces is that it lets the film end very conclusively while also still teasing the future. This person got away with it. They exposed the online betting community and they are like a vigilante of sorts in terms of what they are or how they view themselves. They took out the people responsible for their almost potential death if they didn't survive that opening they went after the the boyfriend exposed him the boyfriend was framed for all of this stuff related to his friends dying his girlfriend dying because she ultimately would have died in this story and this person is going to tease of in their mind a voiceover of potentially going after familiar woodsboro faces i say familiar woodsboro faces so that way it can be left ambiguous so just so that way if you don't lock down an f campbell if you don't lock down any of these returning people that we all would love to see back at least you aren't stating a obvious bit of dialogue at the end of a scream seven like this that makes it very confusing if you don't even follow through with that bit of dialogue just say familiar woodsboro faces but you guys can let me know what you think about something like that as a as a story potential for scream seven again this is my theory a way to explore true crime you don't need any of the returning stars you could absolutely tease going back to returning stars at the end of the film to petite to tease a potential scream eight but even then it can be executed in a way that's still conclusive and it can function as an end to the franchise if necessary so we're going to dive into some other horror updates Let's talk about Jurassic World 4 or Jurassic Park 7. I don't know what you want to call this because this film has been given a release date of July 2nd, 2025. Deadline reported this in several other reputable outlets. The bullet train director David Leach is in talks to direct according to Deadline. The new movie, as we know, will be a completely fresh take on a Jurassic era with Jurassic World cast members Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard not expected to return, nor the original trilogies, Thespians Jeff Goldblum, Laura Dern, and Sam Neill. Deadline reports. This reiterates the previous reports that Jurassic World aims to enter a new era for the franchise. Now, Leech wouldn't have been a bad choice at all, and I'll get to why I say he wouldn't have been a bad choice at all in a second. Especially if the OG writer who is returning has cooked up a tremendous story for him to bring to life. Until proven otherwise, I'll say that this has the potential to be better than the last four Jurassic Park films. It quite honestly does. Just tap into the horror roots and go from there. Now, the reason I said Leech wouldn't have been a, a bad choice is because it looks like he actually the talks with him fell through according to deadline this report came out today universal is back on the search for a director to helm its next jurassic world movie as deadline is hearing david leach is no longer in talks to direct the film insiders say the parting was amicable and that ultimately the studio and leach had different visions for the film who do you guys want to see direct Jurassic World 4 or Jurassic Park 7, whatever you want to call it? David Leach, I don't think would have been the biggest problem with the narrative as much as I could have seen his handling of characters being a problem. Just from what I've seen in the past, uh, he would have had definitely had to hone in on making us care about the characters. Not that that's really what people come to these movies for, but I still think you can successfully tell a compelling Jurassic World film with characters you can get behind and stop relying on the past if you actually can just invest in the future with quality characters to get behind. So the, the next thing we're going to talk about here is Maxine. Maxine's first trailer could drop during the Super Bowl this Sunday, according to World of Real. They have been right in the past about things, but we'll see if A24 pulls the trigger on Maxine during the big game this Sunday. It's not been announced by them. It's, I'll just like, I'll just say this is a rumor at this point. I imagine that these are some of the things the trailer will, will tease or showcase. Maxine's role in The Puritan 2, since we know she's starring in the movie. A glimpse at the killer's costume. Some moments about the farmer's daughter tape from X. And some other glimpses of the cast, such as Kevin Bacon stalking Maxine in the film. These are just guesses because I don't know what the trailer could actually reveal. It would be wonderful if the trailer has this some like, let's say the trailer has the words this summer attached to it. If it actually drops during the Super Bowl, it'd be wonderful to see that just to confirm what Michelle Monaghan speculated about during a recent interview where she addressed Maxine possibly coming out this summer. Will the trailer drop this Sunday during the Super Bowl? Uh, we'll have to wait and see. My best guess is it might just drop online and not actually during the actual event. They're just going to drop it during the big game. Well, we'll have to wait and see because I know all of you, myself included, are dying to see this trailer. Those of us who are anticipating Maxine, we need this trailer. Now we're going to jump into Predator. So Dan Trachtenberg is on board 
to Right and Direct Badlands, which is a new standalone Predator movie. Deadline reports the film is a high priority for the studio and sources say Trachtenberg and execs are already meeting with talent for the lead role. The site report continues. Plot details are being kept under wraps other than it featuring everyone's favorite extraterrestrial big game hunter. It's also not known about release plans as the last film exclusively streamed on Hulu. But given that 20th Century has been very much back in the theatrical game with films like Boogeyman and the upcoming Alien film bowing in theaters a theatrical premiere isn't out of the question now, i've also believed the reports that have come out mentioned that this will also be a female-led film just like prey the report also mentioned prey 2 being in the works and several other predator projects being possible also this film in particular badlands i think is supposed to be set in the future sometime i don't know where exactly but i want to say i think the v scooper might have been dropping some details about how this project could end up being on their twitter for those of you who want to go digging on the v, on the V scoopers Twitter to see what this story could potentially look like. I didn't have a problem with Prey. I haven't revisited Prey since it dropped. I thought it was one of the better Predator movies. Granted, some people found it to be overly woke and, you know, this, that, and the third. I get where you're coming from. Some stuff about it, yes, isn't really believable. I get it. But when I think about some of the other Predator projects, I don't take a lot of issue with Prey. I think it's a very competently made addition to the Predator franchise. The last thing we're going to talk about here is related to Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th's prequel show, Crystal Lake, apparently was slated to shoot this March, but is now going to actually begin filming this summer. Previously, Brian Fuller let a fan know on Instagram that spring summer shoot was the goal anyway. Now, according to Friday the 13th franchise.com, the series is indeed going to shoot this summer, according to their sources, and not this spring. The report also noted that cast members have been locked and just are waiting to be announced. Crystal Lake is going to be better than Chucky. <laughs> that is my bold prediction about this show at the moment. I can't wait to see who is joining joining Adrian since she's returning. I'm looking forward to how the show examines Jason and Mrs. Voorhees' relationship. And of course, the 80s writer that's rumored to be involved. I cannot wait for his name to be confirmed. Yes, it's a he. Take your guesses down below. Uh, what do you guys hope to see in Crystal Lake? What do you want from Crystal Lake? Do you still just not prefer to have a show after all and you would rather just get a new movie? I think that's the case for a lot of you. I don't really take issue with it at this point because Jason has been gone from our lives for over a decade. I just want to see Jason in a competent capacity the same way I've been getting Chucky in some moderate, decent to competent capacity. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links on my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, to let me know if there are any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.